Welcome back to the FOM 11 Interactive Assignment Walkthroughs. And this is the third of the series, and it is graphing linear equations. Okay, let's get going here. Okay, so before we get going here, I want to just remind everyone that we have an x-axis and a y-axis. So an x-axis along here, and we have our y-axis in the vertical position. And we always write coordinates as x comma y. So we go side to side first, and then up or down. So if, for instance, we have um, a spot right here, and we want to know what the coordinates are, we're going to start with the brackets. We're going to go in the x direction, positive 1, positive 2. So that's going to be the x component of it. And then the y is up 1, 2, 3 in the positive. So 2 comma 3. So when I say graphing linear equations, what I'm trying to say is we're going to be graphing straight lines. There's a number of different formats um, to graph lines, but probably the easiest in graphing it is the, this, this format, and it is called the y equals mx plus b, or the um, slope-intercept form. And the reason why it's called slope-intercept form is because we have our y and our x variables, but in it we have an m, and m stands for slope, which is going to be rise over run, and our b is going to be our y-intercept, so the slope-intercept form. All right. Let's give an example. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick two points that cross really nicely across the grids. So you could choose this point here, you could choose this point, this point. Hey, you can choose this one, but it's not going to be a very friendly number. It's like one and a half. Let's, so I would recommend staying away from that. Um, let's use this one here first. Uh, one and two comma two. Zero comma one and two comma two. So what we're going to do is we're going to write the y equals something x plus something and we're going to try to figure it out so from this point you're going to start from one point and you're going to rise we're going up and that's in a positive way so that's up one that's the rise and the run is going to be in the positive one two direction and that's our slope the second part is the b and this is the y intercepts the the y axis is this one here we're going to say where along the, this y-axis does the line cross. And it sure crosses at exactly 1, and it crosses at positive 1, so we're going to say plus 1. There, we are done. That is the equation for the line. It's that easy. I just want to show you before we go any farther here, if you choose this one instead of this bottom one, these are your two points, but you're going to start here. Your rise is going to be down 1, or negative 1, and our run is going to be 1, negative 2, and so our m, or our slope, is going to be rise over run, rise over run, and negative 1 divided by negative 2 is the same thing as 1 over 2. It doesn't matter where you start as long as you choose two points and you stick to it. So you're going to either go up and in the positive way, or negative down and negative backwards. All right, let's do another one here. So we have our y equals mx plus b. Let's choose two points that fit on the grid nicely. So none of these, none of these, that one would work. Um, that one would work, that one would work. Why don't we use this one and this one? Um, so we'll use this one and this one. You don't even have to figure out that this is 0 comma negative 1 and 1 comma 2. It doesn't really matter. What we're going to do is let's start here in the bottom and where are we going? We're slope equals rise over run. So starting here, we're going to rise up, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. And our run is going to be in the positive direction of 1. So our slope is 3 over 1, which is kind of like 3 divided by 1. You can just leave as 3. Or if you want, you can leave it as 3 over 1. That's fine. But you'll more commonly see it as just 3, because it's assumed that it's 3 over 1. And our b is our intercept. And where does it cross this line here? It crosses at negative 1. So our, the equation of this line y is equal to 3x minus 1. All right, let's move on to the next one here. These are getting really easy. You can pause it and figure it out for yourself. I'm going to choose this point and this point. Um, before I do, you're going to notice that all of these slopes that we've shown is if you were skiing from left to right, you'd be skiing uphill. That's a positive slope. It's not a positive thing, but it's a positive slope. And here, if you're going from left to right, you'd be going downhill. So it's just 
you can see that it's going to be a negative slope. And that's one really nice tip is if you can remember to do that. It's like, I think this is a negative slope, but I'll double check. And I'm going to start down here. So let's figure out m is equal to slope equals rise over run. And I'm going to start here. I'm going to go up one, up two. So this is positive two over backwards one, backwards two, backwards three, so negative three. So rise is going to be two over negative three, or just negative two thirds. It doesn't matter which is the negative, because if I start here, I'm going to go down two, and then positive three, and it's the same thing, down two, positive three, or it's just negative, and then the two thirds. All right, and the B, that's going to be our Y intercept, where it crosses the Y axis. And it's right here, it's at positive two. So the equation is going to be y is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 2. All right, I think we got one more example here. Hey, we do. Um, can you tell just looking at it, is it going to be a positive slope or a negative slope? I believe it's going to be a negative slope. I'm going to use this point here and this point here, which would be perfect. So our m is equal to slope equals rise over run. So rise is going to be up one, positive one, and backwards one, two, three, four. So backwards four or negative four. So it's going to be negative one over four. It's going to be one over negative four or negative one over four. It depends on which way you go. And our B, of course, is where we're, it crosses the Y intercept. And that's going to be at negative one. So our slope is going to be y, or sorry, our equation is going to be y is equal to negative one-fourths x minus one. All right, so the next kind of question, we're going to try to determine the equation of a line if it passes through two different points. And of course, our points are listed as x and y, and x and y. If I call this point number, I'm just going to say this is point number two and this is point number one. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give these little subscripts. So this is x2 and y2 versus x1 and y1. We're only given those numbers so that I can identify which pair it comes from. And it doesn't matter if this is point 0.1 and point 0.2 or point 0.2 and point 0.1. It doesn't matter. So the easiest way that we would probably be familiar with is to actually graph this and then figure out just like these ones we were just doing. So let's do that. Um, the first is at 5, 6. So x in the x direction, we go over 5. And then y, we're going to go up to the 6. So this is going to be 5, 6. And the other one is 0, comma, 1, 2, 3. Y is 3, so it'll be something like this. There will be a line going somewhere like that. And this is 0, comma, 3. And then what we would do is we'd say um, y is equal to mx plus b. Our m is our slope equals rise over run equals the rise is 1, 2, 3 up. And run is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And our B is going to be where it crosses the Y intercept. And it sure crosses right at three. So let's put a three or a positive three. So the equation of the line is Y is equal to three fifths X plus three. Okay. Um, this works great for these kind of questions, but you have to be able to graph it, which takes a little bit of time. And if the numbers don't fit perfectly on the grid, like if it's 5.2 comma 6 and 0 0.3 comma 3.7, it would be really hard to actually measure that accurately. Um, and also if the numbers are really big, like if we're in the 50s or 60s and you know that sort of thing, then it'd be really hard to count each and every one of them. So there's another way we can do this. And we're going to use the this one down here. The slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Figure out the y is the rise, it's how up or down it is, and this, the run is this one, which is the x variable. What we're going to do is we're going to pull them straight from these numbers. So the y2 is going to be 6 here. And the y1, we're going to go up here, is 3. I highly recommend labeling your points just like this. Um, it makes it way easier because you don't have to remember which is x and which is y. You've done it already, and now you're just sort of, you've got it all set up. Your x2 is going to be your 5. And your x1 is going to be 0. So 6 minus 3 is 3. And it's going to be the 5. And I want to show you the, the next part is the harder part. Um, so now that we have the slope, let's find the b, which is the y-intercept. And the way that we do this, again, it's easy for this explanation because I've made an easy equation. But if it gets to be a hard equation, it's really hard to get it exactly. Um, so 
what we're going to do is to find B, we're going to use the slope, which is what we've got here, our M, and we're going to substitute one of the X and Y points in for this X and this Y. So we know this one, this is going to be the three-fifths. plus b. So let's grab one of these. I'm going to grab the 3, 0, 3. You could grab either of them, but these are smaller numbers, so it's probably going to be easier. So one of the points is going to be 0, 3. Well, then the x is going to be 0, and the y is going to be 3. And I'm going to solve for b. So 3 equals 3 fifths times 0, which is going to be 0. So 3 equals 0 plus b. So 3 is equal to b. So y equals 3 fifths x plus 3. Let's do a slightly tougher one, and we're going to just do it all from right here. Determine the equation of the line if it passes through both negative 2, negative 1, and 4, negative 7. And you could do this graphically again. It's not that hard, but learn this other way because it, there will be circumstances where you'll use it. All right, so let's label these ones x and y. And this is going to be x and y. And it doesn't matter. We can make this point 1, so let's make this x1, y1, and this x2, y2. So our m it's going to be there. I'm going to write my y equals mx plus b. I have it written down here too, but I just want to write it down so that I remember what I'm doing. So I'm going to try to figure out the slope first. All right, well, it's y2, which is negative 7 minus y1, which is negative 1. I'm just going to put in brackets so that we don't get the, the subtractions and the negatives all confused. So it's negative 7 minus the negative 1, and x2 is going to be 4 minus the negative 2. Well, that's going to be negative 7 plus 1 over 4 plus 2, which is going to be negative 6 over 6. Oh, so it's negative 1. That's easy, or negative 1 over 1, but negative 1 is fine. Okay, and then what we can do is we can put it into, put that in here, and then use one of these points, probably the smaller numbers, and pop them in for x and y. So our, I'm going to redo this. No, I'm just going to move it over here. Maybe I can move it over. We'll see. All right, so I'm going to rewrite this. y is equal to mx plus b. Um, y is going to be our negative 1 is equal to, our slope is negative 1, and our x term is negative 2 plus b. And let's figure that out. Well, negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. I want to get b all by itself, so how do I get rid of this 2? I'm going to subtract it from this side, but I have to subtract it from that side. So b is equal to negative 3. And I think I can move my screen back here. Almost I could. So the equation for the line is going to be y is equal to negative 1, or negative x, negative 1x, that's fine, minus 3. If you don't want this 1 in there, you can just write it as negative x minus 3. And when you say negative x, it's assumed it's a negative 1x, or negative 1 over 1x. Um, all of those work. All right, we're getting most of the way through it. Let's go on to the three different forms of linear relations and how do you convert between them, because I will ask you something about that um, on the assignment here. So there's three different forms. There's the slope-intercept form, and I remember the slope-intercept because the slope is the m and the intercept is the b. There's the slope-point form, and there's the slope, and here's our point, our x and our y, not including the main ones. And our general one, which is the most boring, is everything is on one side of the equals, and there's the equal sign, and it's zero on the other. All right, so in the three different forms, what is the equation of a line that passes through a single point, okay, and has a slope of one half? So, oh, this is great. They've given us the slope already. So I'm going to do that right now. m equals slope is equal to 1 over 2. So how you write it in slope form, it's actually the easiest way of doing this, x and y. It's hard to graph from it, but it's actually really easy. Um, we're going to change this y is going to be the red y, so it's going to be 4 here. Our m is going to be the 1 half that we've already determined. The black x, the black colored x stays the same, but this red colored x we're going to pull from here, so it's minus negative 3 or y minus 4 is equal to 1 half x plus 3. And that is in slope point form, because we've got the slope and we've got our 3 comma negative 4 in there. All right. Next, we're going to rearrange this to the slope intercept form. So I'm going to rewrite this as y minus 4 is equal to 1 half x plus 3. 
the whole goal is to get y is equal to and everything else on the other side. This is what we want it as. And before I get rid of this 4, let's deal with this multiplication. I think this half is going to give us a problem. So it's a half times everything in the bracket. So I'm just going to draw these arrows here. We're going to multiply 1 half times the x. We're also going to multiply the 1 half times the 3. So what do we have here? y minus 4. I'm just rewriting that side. 1 half x plus 3 halves. Now what I can do is let's get rid of this 4. I can do, get rid of the 4 on this side by adding 4 to both sides. So y is equal to 1 half x plus 3 halves plus 4. And how do you do this? Well, let's convert these to halves. So instead of 4, I'm going to write this as 8 halves. You guys okay with that? 8 halves. So here it is. y is equal to 1 half x plus 3 halves plus 8 halves. The bottoms are the same, so we can add the tops. And we're still dealing with halves. And there we go. The equation is y is equal to 1 half x plus 11 over 2. So you can imagine when it crosses the, the y-intercept, it's going to cross at 5 and a half, which is kind of a weird spot for it to cross in. Um, but, I mean, it's not weird for the line, but it's hard to measure that. And this is why we use these algebraically t algebraic tools. Okay, let's, lastly, what we want to do is we want to convert to general form. This is where we move everything over to one side, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I'm just going to rewrite this as 1 half x plus 11 over 2. In this, how can I get rid of fractions in this thing? Well, if I multiplied everything by 2, these fractions would certainly disappear. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So instead of y, now I'm going to have 2y. I'm going to multiply this through. This 2 goes to both of these. Because they're multiplied already, it just goes to this, and it goes to this. So 2 times a half is just 1x. And 11 halves times 2 is just 11. It's 22 over 2, or 11. Okay, we're almost there now. We need to move everything to one side and leave 0 on the other. So if we subtract 2y from both sides, um, we have 0 on this side is equal to x minus 2y plus 11. And there we go. We made it. That is the general form. So the general form, the slope-intercept form, because it's got the slope and the y-intercept, and the slope-point form, because it's got the slope and it's got the point in here. I think that's it. So uh, I hope this helps. Keep up the good work, and we'll see you in the next one.